So last week I uploaded a video that was uh, me just trying to install all the necessary repositories and libraries and whatnot on GCP. Um, I very quickly realized that, that was kind of a silly way to teach how to install stuff. Um, so I went ahead and wrote a bash script just to do it all for you. Um, so what I'm going to do in this video is just like sort of splice together the anaconda part because you still need to do that mostly manually and then um, go ahead and like talk about all the library installation. So uh, what will happen next is you'll see like the old, apart from the old video into this video. So if you get confused, that's why. Um, but anyway, I've also put together uh, a markdown file um, in this AI repo. I'll put a link to this in the uh, description. Basically going through all the steps. So uh, you're gonna set up GCP, you're gonna set up Anaconda, uh, you're then going to uh, install the repositories and you're gonna run a test just to make sure everything's running. Um, so you'll start, we'll start by just setting up the Anaconda stuff and then we'll jump into the repos. Um, that's about it for now. Um, yeah. All right. As promised, I'm going to show you how to install the software we need for this class. Um, so I'm back inside of, uh, GCP. Um, I've selected my, uh, virtual machine and I'm just going to come up here and I'm going to hit start. And obviously it's going to start billing me. So just say, yes, I understand. So this is now starting, um, it's gonna run for a little bit. So just let me walk you through what we're gonna do. So the first thing we're gonna need to do is we're gonna install uh, Anaconda. Anaconda is just an environment um, management system um, and that's gonna be really helpful for us just so we can uh, make sure we're saving everything to the right, uh, or basically like when we install dependencies, they're installed in the right place. Um, if you've ever tried to do any of this work, uh, you realize like differences of Python versions and other versions just make it a really, really big pain to like manage your software. Um, so I personally have found Anaconda works well. Um, there are also Docker instances if you're a Docker person. Um, I'm gonna teach Anaconda because it's a little bit simpler, so I think uh, we'll just start there. So uh, now that my instance is running, I'm gonna come over here, I'm gonna say open uh, in browser window. Once this is open, um, we'll be able to uh, start the install process. Cool, so we're here. Um, so again, I'm inside of my instance. Uh, I'm just gonna type ls, see what's in here. Um, so I already have this folder in here. Uh, we'll work with that in a minute. Um, the first thing I need to do is get uh, Anaconda installed. So I have actually gone through and just like copied and pasted these steps. Um, I'll probably make a document um, that I'll link to in the notes just to sort of help you understand the steps. Um, this might get updated, but as of right now, it's the latest. This is the latest version of Anaconda. I just found it using one of their archives. Um, so you're, the first thing we're going to do is grab this, and we are going to uh, paste it in here. So it just says wget and then uh, this file. And because we're on Google servers, these are pretty fast downloads. Okay, so that's now working. So the next thing we need to do is just bash, like run that command. And that's going to install Anaconda for us. Oh, that's because I just copy and paste the wrong command. So we want to do yep, that one. Uh, go ahead and say yes. It's basically all of the uh, legal requirements that none of us ever read. Just hit return, return, return until it's done. Come on, uh, and then you gotta answer yes. Uh, press enter to confirm the location. And it's gonna install everything. So this happens, um, I'm gonna quickly look up, I always forget the, con the commands to create a new environment. Um, so it's conda create uh, environment and conda cheat sheet. This is always the page I end up on. You can tell because it's been shown so many times. Um, and I want conda create and then I want this. So let's go ahead and see where we are with this. All right, so it's still working. Uh, so Anaconda, um, the way you usually use it is you create different environments and you can switch between those environments to uh, change 
um, different uh, different environments. Uh, basically, it's hard to describe an environment without describing it as an environment. Uh, you can switch between different like install versions of things. So this is going to be what's helpful. So now I've installed this. Um, so the next thing that you want to do is just paste in this command. Again, I'll post this in the show in the comments. Um, maybe I'll create a file here that works. So the first thing we want to do is uh, conda create is going to create this environment. We're going to give this environment a name. Um, I'm just going to call it stylegan. We probably only need one uh, environment for this entire class, but it's really helpful to just have this set up ahead of time. Um, the Python version is, let's just do 3.7. Um, that's one of the latest versions, and I'm 95% positive it will work for us. Um, it's either 3.7 or 3.6, but let's just go ahead and run this. Um, interesting. Um, <laughs> oh, you know what it is? I need to restart my shell, and I never remember how to do that. Um, Let's try this. We'll see that I am the worst and I just stack overflow everything. Okay. Yep, so that worked. So the reason that I know that worked is because now it says base here. And base is always like your starting point. It's what you start from when you're building Anaconda. Um, so I'm just going to actually, while I'm taking notes here, I'm going to copy this and just paste this into my doc so I know I have the right steps. Um, so we're going to go back here and then we're going to press up twice. And we'll be back to this. So conda create dash dash name stylegam python 3.7. We're going to run this. And we're going to hit yes for proceed. And now it's all set up. So you'll see here, uh, to activate this environment, you want to use conda activate stylegam. And to deactivate it, you're going to use this. Thanks, bug. Um, so we'll just copy this command. And we will paste it here. Bug, really too much, baby. Come on. Sorry, cat is always screaming at me. Um, conda activate stylegan. You'll see that now we're here in stylegan because this is now working, right? So it's the stylegan here. Okay, now I'm going to insert the second part here. So I'm going to assume that you have the anaconda step set up. Um, if you don't, go back and watch the part about that. Um, there's probably some things I've done a little differently since that video cut out. I probably removed the anaconda bash file um, that just got set up. But you'll see here I'm in the stylegan um, environment. So the next thing we need to do is we actually need to install all the uh, code and repos. So we're going to go back over to this file here. I'll assume you have done this step. Uh, make sure you have. Now we're just going to install these repositories. So we're going to take this first line. We're just literally grabbing a bash script from um, uh, actually from this repo. Uh, and we're just going to bring it into our server here. So we're just going to paste this in. And now when I ls, you'll see that I have this install stylegan.sh. So we're just going to go ahead and type in bash, and then install, tab complete, and we're going to hit return. Now this is going to install a bunch of uh, libraries and other pieces for us. Um, I've already ran this on this machine and then cleaned up some stuff. So this will probably go quicker than it would for you. Um, it's probably going to install a bunch of pip, and, uh, pip dependencies, that sort of thing. Um, but it should run pretty cleanly. I've double checked this a couple times. So just hit return. And now we're installing stuff. You'll see most of my requirements have been met, whereas yours probably have not. Um, I don't actually know why this, I've noticed that this throws an error a couple times and I don't actually know why. Uh, we'll see. It might mean that we have to go back in and um, run this requirement just to make sure the data sets tools it works. But for this class, we might not be doing data sets tools on the repo or like in GCP. So we'll sort of see. So this ran really, really quickly. And that's because GCP is obviously very fast to run this stuff. Um, and in a lot of cases, we're pulling stuff from Google down to here. Um, so uh, if we type ls, you'll see there are now a bunch of new folders in here. So we've got data sets tools. Um, this is my repo and my library for helping to um, crop images at scale and generally produce data sets. Uh, you might find this helpful. I have a bunch of videos around this if you're interested in making your own data sets. Uh, then there are three stylegan repos. So there's DB Schultz, which is my fork. Uh, this is just a nice basic fork of the NVIDIA uh, repo. Um, it generally does square images really well, um, and it has a couple other convenience functions built in there to um, help train from previous pickles, that sort of thing. Uh, I'm going to skip over the Peter Bayless, Bailey's one to come back to it. Uh, Skyfly nil. Um, this is uh, the repo that I mostly use. I really, really like it. 
this does non-square uh, images, so if you want to do rectangular images, uh, this is set up to do that. Uh, this is probably the one that I'll teach for most of the class, so make sure you've installed this one. Um, if you know that you just want to do some really basic stuff, you can work off of mine and it'll be fine. Uh, the last uh, repo in here is the Peter Bailey's one. Um, this does class labels, so basically if you have Say you have a, a data set that contains a bunch of different types of artists and you want to mash it together, um, you can actually, doing some additional data set set up here, you can actually use all those and keep the class labels and then when you're generating images from it, you can use those labels to get different types of images out. Um, I actually have not done this yet. I actually haven't built a data set like this yet. This will probably be more for our advanced like end of the like class sort of stuff. So if you are interested in doing this, um, let me know and we can sort of make sure that you're set up for success here. But in general, I'm going to start us with this repo so we can sort of like get started using this thing, um, which will be really, really helpful. And I think it's going to be nice to sort of see a couple things. Uh, Peter Bailey's uh, repo is actually built off of this one, so it's just sort of adding some additional features on top of this. Uh, so it, if you understand how this Skyfly nil works, um, you'll be able to work off Peter Bailey's pretty easy once you get your data set set up. Okay. So one last thing before we close down our server is we want to make sure that uh, our, we can run a test here. So the first thing that we want to do is uh, we just want to go into um, this DB Schultz folder, and then we want to go into the StyleGAN2 repo inside of it. So inside of here, you should see all of the general sort of um, StyleGAN stuff you need. The last thing we want to do is we just want to run this command. Uh, this is just the test that is going to generate a like like 25 sample images for us. Um, and if this runs, that there's a pretty good chance then that like at, we fixed like everything else is set up for us. Um, I've yet to find a case of where this runs, but then something when I'm doing a training like doesn't run. So we're just going to copy this command here. We're going to put this back up in here, paste that, and hit run. Again, yours may run slower because uh, there's some pieces that uh, the first time you run any network um, in StyleGAN on GCP, it needs to install some stuff or actually just like create some cached files of things. So mine might run a little bit faster than yours, um, but essentially this is working now. You'll see it is uh, during a new file called results. Um, it's using our pre-trained pickle. This is the FFHQ, um, and it is setting up some plugins. This is usually the process that takes the longest because this is actually uh, a custom uh, TensorFlow um, command that is that needs to be cached. So once it is finished caching, um, the next couple times would be a lot faster. Okay, so these uh, custom functions have seemed to be working now. Um, we're going to start to see the images getting generated. Now I put down here in this uh, markdown file just what you should sort of see. Um, and yours might not match up exactly like this. Uh, you might have a different folder number or you might have a different timing, uh, but it should more or less look like this. And if I go back here, still haven't started generating images. I feel like there's like a, it, there's a little bit of a hiccup. Yeah, it just takes a little bit longer to generate that very first image. And then after this, it's pretty quick. Yeah, see now it's running. So see it's generating images. I think this is running on a P100 as well. So this is a little bit slower. If you did a V100, you'll, you'll probably get something a little bit faster. Uh, but you'll see this ended up one minute, 41 seconds. The When I last did, it was one minute, 45 seconds. There's a little bit of difference here. Um, this doesn't matter as much as you getting a success and that it finished running this. Um, so this is all set up. I know that this works now. Um, oops. Uh, so, and then if I do an LS in this folder, you'll see that I have inside of results, There is a generate images folder. So if I just do cd results slash 001, um, and then you ls inside of this folder, you'll see that there are a number of images in here. Um, now, one of the things that you have to sort of learn about GCP is because um, there's no static IPs, and actually setting up a static IP is a little annoying with this, 
you generally have to download directly from this interface or use SCP or something else, which is not my favorite uh, in the world, to be honest, but it does work. So um, an easy way to just do like download a single file from here is to just get the directory you're in. So this is the path that I'm in. Uh, and then you come up here to this little settings icon and you go download file and then you paste in the path. And then the last thing we want is the image. So let's just download um, seed 6602.png and if hit download, it's going to start downloading this image. Cool. So that downloaded, and I can look at this in Finder, and there you go. I have a, a fake face. So this worked, everything uh, seems to be the way I want it to be. Um, I'm ready to shut down my server now here. If you ran into any issues where this didn't work, um, hit me up in Slack uh, or in the comments, and we'll try to figure out what happened. Uh, but everything I know, based on if you set up GCP right and if you run my in my uh, setup script, it should work fine, um, but we'll see what's going on. Um, okay, I think I'm just going to shut down my machine over here really quickly, uh, and that should be it for me for now. So let me know if you have any questions. Thanks.